Hi there folks and welcome back. Over the last little while we've talked lots and lots about line integrals. Integrals of multivariable functions over curved lines in space. If you think about it, we already knew how to integrate multivariable functions over two-dimensional regions. And now, by learning how to integrate over curved lines, we're really learning how to integrate over the boundaries of those regions, right? The boundary of a 2D region is either a curved line or a collection of curved lines. We'd like to see if we can extend these same ideas to three dimensions. When we discussed triple integrals, we learned how to integrate multivariable functions over three-dimensional domains. But can we integrate just over the boundary of such a domain? The boundary would be a curved surface or a collection of curved surfaces. So this is sort of where we're heading. We're going to learn how to integrate three variable functions over curved surfaces, and we're going to learn what such an integral might represent physically. Before we can jump into the rich theory behind surface integrals, however, we're going to have to come up with a definition. What should it mean to integrate a function over a two-dimensional surface? We had to do the same sort of thing with line integrals, right? We had to come up with a definition for what it meant to integrate over a curved line. And with a bit of thought, this is the definition that we came up with. The definition relies on us being able to parameterize our domain. Right? We need a vector function r of t that traces out this curve. To integrate over a surface, we need to be able to do the same sort of thing. We need to be able to take a 2D surface and represent it using a parametric equation. That might sound a little weird because we've never done this before, but today we're going to learn how it's done. We're going to take familiar surfaces like spheres, cones, cylinders, and graphs of functions, z equals f of x, y, and represent them using parametric equations. Now we know that a parametric equation, say r of t, of just one parameter, will sketch out a curved line in space. If we want to sketch out a whole 2D region, we're going to need a second parameter. So let's take a look at the following example, which involves two parameters u and v. I want to sketch the parametric surface given by r of u v equals 3 cos u, 3 sin u, v, with u ranging between 0 and 2 pi, and v ranging between 0 and infinity. Okay, I'm not sure how to handle this with two parameters, so I'm going to fix v as a constant. I'm going to see what happens when I let v be a constant, and I let u range over all of its possible values. So maybe we'll set v equal to 0. That will give us the equation r of u 0 equals 3 cos u, 3 sin u, 0. All right, the z component is zero, which means whatever graph this represents lives somewhere in the x, y plane. But hold on a second. If x is 3 cos u and y is 3 sine u, well, that's the equation of a circle. It's a circle of radius 3 centered at the origin and traversed counterclockwise. It looks something like this. What if instead we had picked v to be a different constant, say 1 half? Well, we would see the same circle, except our z value is going to shift up by one half. So I'd see a circle of radius 3 up here. And similarly, if I set v equal to 1 or 2 or pi or whatever you like, I'm going to see that same circle just shifted up along the z axis. So perhaps not surprisingly, this is the equation of a cylinder. It's a cylinder of radius 3 centered at the origin. We would have arrived at the same curve if we had decided to set u equal to a constant. If u were constant, then x would be 3 cos u and y would be 3 sine u. That's some point along this circle of radius 3. Maybe it's this point here. If we then let v range over all possible values, we get a vertical line extending from the xy plane. And if you do this at all points, sure enough, you still get a cylinder. These curves, by the way, are often referred to as grid lines. The circles are the curves that you get by setting v equal to a constant, and the vertical lines are the curves that you get by setting u equal to a constant. Very reminiscent of cross sections and level curves, isn't it? But you can get some pretty weird stuff depending on how your curve is parametrized. Now what if you had to come up with this parametrization yourself? Do you think you could do it? I bet you could. Remember, the cylinder is most easily described in terms of cylindrical coordinates, so this is probably a good place to start. Its equation is just r equals 3. So using our conversion formulas, we have that x is 3 cos theta, y equals 3 sine theta, 
and z equals z. So you can see we have two parameters that are naturally built into this coordinate system, theta and z. We fixed the radius r. Theta is allowed to range between 0 and 2 pi. You can go all the way around. And since we are not allowed to dip below the xy plane, z could be any number greater than or equal to 0. There you go. There's your parameterization. Let's see if we can use the same ideas from the last slide to come up with a parametric equation for the unit sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. The sphere can be described most easily in terms of, well, you guessed it, spherical coordinates. The equation is simply rho equals 1. So we'll turn to our conversion formulas. x is given by rho sine phi cos theta. And in this case, since rho is 1, we can write it more simply as sine phi cos theta. y is given by rho sine phi sine theta. And again, we replace rho with 1 to get sine phi sine theta. Finally, z is rho cos phi. Since rho is 1, z is cos phi. And would you look at this? After eliminating rho, we're left with two parameters from our spherical coordinates, phi and theta. Theta is allowed to range between 0 and 2 pi, right? We can go all the way around the z-axis. Phi, on the other hand, can extend from the positive z-axis all the way down to the negative z-axis. It could take on any value between 0 and pi. And there you go. We have a parametric equation. r of theta phi, these are our parameters, equals sine phi cos theta, sine phi sine theta, and cos phi, where theta and phi are restricted to these intervals. Now as a follow-up question, what if you wanted just the upper half of the sphere? Easy. We already have a parameterization for the whole sphere. Now we just have to restrict our z value. If z is going to be greater than or equal to 0, we want cos phi to be greater than or equal to 0. And therefore, phi has to be somewhere between 0 and pi over 2. This makes sense because phi is the angle made with the positive z axis. If we go beyond pi over 2, we're dipping below the xy plane. Back when we first learned about parametric curves, I told you that functions, y equals f of x, were some of the easiest curves to parametrize. After all, the work is already done. If we set x equal to t, then y is simply f of t. We get the parametric equation r of t equals t f of t, where t can range over whatever part of the domain you like. Maybe you want the whole domain, maybe you want just some of the domain, that's up to you. The situation for multivariable functions is exactly the same. If I give you a function z equals f of x, y, then your x and y are going to be the parameters. They can take on whatever values they like in the domain, but z must be equal to this expression here. So we could use the parametric equation r of, say, x, y, there's no need to rename them here, r of x, y equals x, y, f of x, y. Let's see if we can use these ideas to parametrize a plane. If I move everything except z to the right-hand side and then divide by 2, I would get the equation z equals 1 minus 2x minus y over 2. And there you go, z as a function of x and y. We can use the parametrization above. Our parametric equation is r of x, y, these are our parameters, equals x, y, 1 minus 2x minus y over 2. And since we're talking about the entire plane, x and y could be any real number. Of course, there's nothing special in this example about z. If I had wanted to express y as a function of the other variables, I could have done that as well. By moving x and z to the other side, we would get y equals 2 minus 4x minus 2z, and therefore we have a different parametrization. Our new parameters are x and z, and our parametric equation is r of x z equals x 2 minus 4x minus 2z and z, where here x and z are allowed to take on any real number. To test your understanding of the content from this lesson, try pausing the video and solving the following problem. I'd like you to parametrize this cone z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared in three different ways. There are tons of ways to parametrize this thing, but there are three distinct approaches that I have in mind. The first approach is to use what we learned on the last slide. We can think of z as a function of x and y. 
And therefore, we can use the parameterization r of x, y, these are our parameters, equals x, y, square root of x squared plus y squared. Here, x and y could be whatever you like. x and y are any real number. For a different approach, you could try converting this cone into cylindrical coordinates. Its equation is simply z equals r. Using our conversion formulas, we can write x equal to r cos theta, y equal to r sine theta, and z is equal to r. And there you go. We have two parameters, this time r and theta. r can take on any non-negative value, right? r is greater than or equal to 0, and theta could be any number between 0 and 2 pi. So there you go, a different parameterization. Finally, we could have written our equation in spherical coordinates. This cone consists of all points that make an angle of pi over 4 with the positive z-axis. So we could write it simply as phi equals pi over 4. Using our conversion formulas, we get x equals rho sine phi cos theta. But of course, phi is pi over 4. So this is root 2 over 2 rho cos theta. y is going to be rho sine phi sine theta. And again, we replace phi to get root 2 over 2 rho sine theta. And finally, z is rho cos phi. We replace phi to get root 2 over 2 rho. And there you go, another parameterization. Here, rho could be any non-negative number, and theta could take on any value between 0 and 2 pi.